get yourself a cup of cuppa and let's have a talk. Everybody, life has changed for me. Ha! So I have tonight a beer. Ta-da! And I'm just gonna let you know that I'm in a good place. So what I decided to do before I met a man was to become really, really into creating my own community. And um, here's a deal. I can do that. I'm not interrupted by a, a relationship. I don't have a partner um, discrediting me like I did when I lived with them. So <clears throat> people, when you're in still a relationship with somebody, however their level of narcissism is, because there are varying degrees, some of them are livable. You can actually live with a garden variety narcissist that actually doesn't consider your needs and you become frustrated, but they're never actually ever that offensive to you. They just may be an Eeyore or constantly angry about life um, with this whole attitude that they didn't get the hand that they wanted to be dealt to them. And it's not like a person who is looking at their cards and going, whoa, this is gonna be hard to play, man. Uh -huh. All right, I'm gonna give it my best. It's more of a, a person who thinks that somebody else is always better off than them and that's their focus. And until they achieve a certain level of their own programmed or otherwise idea of what they have in their head of what is successful, then they're gonna be miserable fucks. So that's what I experienced. So with my first husband, um, and so I couldn't stay married to him. I, I felt like I was gonna die. And I always wanted him to like, I started finding myself fantasizing about him dying during rush hour. And rush hour is like not fast. It's false. It means everybody rushes that during that hour to get home, but then they're not actually doing anything but sitting in their car, listening to the radio. <laughs> We're talking to somebody. So, there we go. I think that's better for me. This is my bench. Hey, this is my kitchen. And we can do some bitching in the kitchen. How's that? Let's do that. Let's do some bitching in the kitchen. If there's some bitching to do, feel free to do it. Message below, email me. I love to relate to my people. But it's helpful for all humans to actually, on the YouTube uh, human world, um, recognize there are things, there are bots. And sometimes there, there are mean bots. And you can recognize them by their inability to be grammatically correct. So just don't correct anybody's grammar. And... Um, don't be the grammar police. However, if you want to be taken seriously by those of us who actually read the comment section, be gr grammatically correct. <laughs> Cheers to that, motherfuckers! And fatherfuckers alike! Hey! Shout out to all my peeps, you know who you are. And uh, I gotta tell you, Get ready for 2024. There's something happening with Pluto and Uranus. Oh. <laughs> uh, seriously, seriously. Um, anal sex is disgusting. I would never recommend it for anybody. And I, I only did it with that last relationship that I had that ended in 2021. But he forced it on me when I lived with him, but by whining and complaining and wanting it, and I finally caved. And then I said to him after, I don't know, he seemed to be enjoying it too much. I said, and it was maybe the third time, because three is always a charm. And I was like, don't fuck this. And I said, listen, 
when this is happening, all I can think of is it being out and over. All I can experience with this is wanting just for everything to be out. It's poop. It's how I poop. Things go out. Things do not go back in. <laughs> I mean, give me a break, man. But because he was a drunk, um, he, he always had a flaccid dick um, when he'd been, you know, sheets to the wind. And so he wanted to do that. And um, so very little damage was done to moi. So I can, I can count myself lucky for that. I mean, can you imagine being rammed by somebody with a full-on heart erection? I mean, this was an inebriated person, man, with a winky dinky that was winky wonky because he'd been drinky donkey. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this. I'm feeling good about life right now, and I am celebrating. So that's right. Okay. Here's a toast to us. Cheers, everybody. Nothing up your anus. And remember, Pluto's gonna do something wonderful in 2024. And it's gonna be like going into Pl uh, Aquarius. So the real age of Aquarius. And people are like, oh wow, the age of Aquarius. Aren't we in the age of Aquarius? When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars. When I forgot the other parts. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius. 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 No. <laughs> Aquarius. So much mindfuckery is happening with the astrology thing and the astronomy thing in our entire history. Haven't you noticed? So they have the stupid column in the newspaper and it's the astrological calendar and people read it and every single sign is bullcrap. But if you read it for amusement purposes, which I always did, uh, not just my sign, I would find out where the commonality was, what this person was trying to say, and then I actually did my own observation to see whether or not any of that stuff happened. But it, because it's so subjective, life is, and she was offering this sort of objectivity for us to look at our life with, Okay, so ra, so ra. I don't know. I don't, I, that daily shit. Tch. But Uranus and Pluto? <laughs> that I want to know about. So there's something happening. And there's going to be a scare thing. There may even be like holo, like um, sky visuals that look like 3D in the sky. So don't be afraid. And that I, 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 it's, I, okay. I behoove you, behoove, what a great word, isn't it? To do grounding exercises. And if you live in a city, you can still do them. And if you want to know what those are and you would like personal coaching sessions on how to ground, I can do that, but I'm not going to go into it on this video because that would be impossible to do while you're on the internet. <laughs> the internet is where you go, sort of like go this way and that way and you know, World Wide Web, baby. Now remember, there is no such thing as a cloud. There are big warehouses with really hot machinery humming away. <laughs> kind of like my HVAC system. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So you all, I wanted to keep this short because I have to, I lost gigabytes on my phone and I'm making a little iMovie that's summing up some of the bullshit that happened in the past. And I wanted to stream through that and pass it over to you as sort of a summarization of that chapter of my life. Because all of us are on to a better chapter. All of us are on to a better chapter. The more and more you become aware 
of your own trauma and then you heal it yourself and you will let your partner have their deal with whatever they are having and you don't take it on. You're only responsible for your own emotional well-being. So if somebody says, you made me feel, that's an alert system to you to let you know to just go to your heart and listen, but don't own any of it. Doesn't mean you have to push back. In fact, it's wise not to. An emotional being is putting up a very hard exterior. And if you push up against it, it creates more and more and more of a division and a fracture between the ability for the two of you to connect. So you just stand there and stay open. Now, if it's narcissistic abuse, that's a whole different ball of wax. And you do the gray rock method. Go to your little search bar on YouTube and do a search for The Little Shaman. Go to her website, all of her, her channel website on YouTube, all of her um, thumbnails are red and they look sort of like raw. Well, because she's gonna give it to you, bullet, 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 bullet. And what you do is if you can't handle it that fast, just figure it out and slow it down. Hmm? <laughs> That's one thing. My ex in Virginia, I was like, I would be like, let's slow it down. He just wanted, okay. So after he stopped doing the, um, I want to be inside there. And then he realized how disgusted I was. He actually became ashamed. <laughs> and, and it's like, and I go, I know it's in the sex books, but it's disgusting. Like I have friends that love it, I told myself not you now not not him um with him i had to let him know that yes i i, I did it for you those three times what one and done would have been good for me um uh, but you were so drunk and so i didn't say any of that but it's like okay i go i hate it i can't wait for it to be over it's disgusting this is when my feces come out this is how i clear i mean how am i supposed to relate to this and enjoy it but all i want is it to be over and you to be out i mean i and he wants to be in my number two place you know what i'm saying so like i said thankfully he was drunk it was very flaccid no damage done and i i finally um not finally because it was only like three times and over a period of time was able to actually speak my truth and to say, this is ridiculous. And I I know it's in sex manuals. <laughs> they tell you how it's done. They tell you how to tickle, 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 the prostrate and all. That's disgusting. I'm not doing it. You guys that like it, fine. So I have such wonderful orgasms um, naturally. And I get such uh, an, an incredible feeling with my body um, with regular sex that exploring an orifice that's not meant for pleasure other than the exodus of a well-deserved bowel movement <laughs> it's not my thing man not my thing <laughs> so I haven't washed my hair in days so I need y'all that like Oh, it's the bit shit people. It's the bitch ooties. I, I took my channel down. If you go over to bit shoot and they ever want to see what I put up there, it's under cat woodland, woodland, like woodland forest creature. And you type that in and it'll all come up. But I got insulted badly for having like um, bedhead because I was doing a kitchen bitching session in the morning. And this person was like, Apollo is, I can't take you seriously because you don't have perfect hair. <laughs> Not her words, but that was the drift. But I said something snarky back, and rightfully so. And uh, it was funny. Maybe I'll actually read it to y'all, and I'll do my I'll do my bit shoot, um, bitch uh channel review with suggestions, and then we'll, I can actually. Oh, that would be fun. But first, I have to do this other thing, and this other thing is releasing. I'm tying up those shitty relationships and the dating weirdness that I experienced. And I have news for you. Well, 
cover that next time.